Hey, what's up guys? I'm Deep Sky Dan, and welcome to my YouTube astrophotography channel using your smartphone. So, in these videos that I'm going to be making, I want to help you do what I do. Now, I like to image galaxies. That's really my thing that I've gotten into. I'm not really a nebula guy. I'm not really a planets guy, star guy. Uh, I like galaxies. And if you've seen my Instagram, then you know that I like galaxies. And what the goal of this video is, these videos I'm going to be making are, I want to help you do what I do. If your galaxies are your thing, then I'm going to teach you how to do that, how to image the galaxies, the gear I use, and how to process them. But in today's video, I want to show you a little bit about the gear that I'm using, um, just to give you an idea, because there's a few important pieces that uh, really help me do what I do. So let's get started. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so the first piece of equipment that I want to talk about. Now, this is an Orion 150 Mac. This is the telescope that I had when I first started doing astrophotography. And even before that, this was a telescope that I was using for visual, for all the planets, stars um, that were, me, my wife and I were looking at. Um, but this was all I had when I got started into doing astrophotography. And I did a lot of research, and people tell you, don't use a Mac, don't use a Mac, don't use a Mac, that's not what they're good for. But this was all I had, so it's all I could use. Um, the, the, what I'm trying to get at here is whatever you have, you can use. Um, you don't have to have something made specifically for astrophotography. You know, if you have a refractor, um, that's great. Those are awesome for shooting galaxies, which is what I'm going to teach you to do. Um, even if you have a reflector, those are still good enough for galaxies. Pretty much anything will work. And it doesn't really matter the size because there's all types of galaxies out there, all sizes of galaxies. And just the idea is to use whatever you have. So I just wanted to show you what I got started with. And I got a lot of great images with this telescope, um, with my phone. And so use whatever you have and don't be worried about it. Um, now you'll see behind me here, I've got the new Edge 8. And this is what I've been using, and this telescope is awesome. If you have the means to pick up something like this, um, you know, I highly recommend it. Uh, they are a little expensive, but it has definitely uh, helped my imaging game step up much higher, and I'm glad I got it. You know, I just went ahead and put on the credit card, said, screw it, I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm glad I've got it, and that's what I'm using now. But the idea is to just to use whatever you have, and don't worry about it. Okay, so let's talk about the second piece of equipment, and this is a really important piece of equipment that I want to talk about uh, and recommend to you. I've got this phone adapter here. This is the Celestron NexYZ 3-axis phone adapter, and I really like this adapter. Now, why do I really like this adapter? Well, because it has three different axes for adjusting your phone to the eyepiece. Uh, let me explain a little bit here. So, if you look, You've got two knobs in the back here and then a third one over here. Now, this first one, this is the adjustment for your phone to go up or down. Uh, the second one on here is the adjustment for your phone to go left or right. And the one that is really important that I like is this one over here. This is the adjustment for your phone to go in or out closer to the eyepiece. Now, why is that important? Well, if you're too close, you're actually going to be missing a lot of light coming out of the eyepiece. And your images are going to be like a small ball of light. And you're not going to look good at all. And that's bad, bad, bad. And if you're too far away, it could possibly be the same. You're not collecting all the light coming out of there. You're not matched up to the eyepiece. So that's what I really like about this phone mount is that third axis. Very important um, because you got to be able to get a nice, clear image and collecting all the light coming out of that eyepiece. So uh, when I got this phone mount, I looked at it. And I noticed that when I used it, I had a little bit of an issue. Um, now, let me explain about that as well. Uh, so there's two pieces here. There's one that connects to your eyepiece and then the one that your phone sits on. Uh, there's a little bit of flexure here. And I have a Galaxy X10 Plus, and it's in a phone case, so it's a little bit heavier than just a normal phone. And when I had my phone in here, um, I noticed gravity was kind of pulling down on here, so I wasn't getting matched up to my eyepiece as well. So I went ahead and modded mine in actually two different ways. The first way to help uh, deal with that was in the back here, 
if you look, there's two black screws. Right below those screws, I put two washers under each one. And what that did was that moved this a little bit forward. So when I put my phone in there and it flexed, it was actually matching up to the eyepiece so much better, which is really nice. Um, and I'm glad I did that. You might not have to do it with your phone. You have to experiment. But if you do, that's how you do it. Uh, just go ahead and pull those screws out, put a couple washers in there, depending on how much flexure you need or don't need. Um, now, the second mod that I did, and when you get this from Celestron, yeah, this is where your eyepiece is attached. And if you look inside, there's a black rubber guard in here. And that's really nice, a soft kind of rubber piece. And that's going to help grip your eyepiece so much better. Now, what they didn't do was they didn't put one up top here. And I don't know why they didn't do that. So I went ahead and did it. I put my own, and you'll see there's a little white strip. Uh, I just went ahead and attached it to there. And actually on this side, there's a little bit of tack on this one. So that's going to help grip your eyepiece so much better because you don't want any play when you're trying to image. Um, so I recommend anybody who has this phone mount, put something up top there. Anything, any kind of grip, whatever you have, um, anything's going to help. Uh, because that's very important. You don't want any play on your eyepiece when you're trying to image, and especially when your telescope is at off angles. Um, now, I really like this uh, phone holder. This is all I've used. I do have a custom-made one for my 2-inch Luminos, uh, but that's a whole other video. Um, so I do recommend using this, uh, but one thing I do recommend is using it in the daytime to get used to it. If you're out there at night and you're trying to to set up and figure it out at night, you're going to get frustrated and you're going to want to throw this thing in the trash. Don't do that. Go out in the daytime, set up your telescope, uh, get used to using it, and then when you go out at night, you'll be ready to rock and roll. Now, let me show you how my phone connects to here just to give you an idea. So there's this little bar here, and this is spring-loaded, and you just pull this out and you pop your phone in, and then it just goes and pushes against your phone. So I've got my S10 Plus, and this is what I use. Um, Galaxy S10 Plus, it's kind of in a soft rubber case. Not a lot of weight, but um, it's bigger than normal, and it definitely added some weight to it. So here's what you want to do is go ahead, you got this little bar over here, pop your phone in, pull this out, and push your phone in, and now you're in. Now, one of the important things to do is you got this little bar down at the bottom. Make sure your phone is butted all the way up against that. Make sure you're flush at the bottom there that's very important and then once you do that you can go ahead and grip this and squeeze these two and make sure you're nice and flush there check fitment again make sure you're pressed against the face and then once you've done that you're set you're ready to go now connecting this to your eyepiece you can uh, put your eyepiece in your telescope and connect them out first and then put your phone in uh, what I like to do is I like to take my eyepiece, make sure it's in my telescope. I actually connect, um, as you see it here, this is how I connect to my eyepiece uh, with my phone in whatever camera mode I'm using. That's really important. Turn your phone on, put it in the camera mode you're going to be using, and then connect it to your eyepiece so you can kind of see where you're at immediately. Because um, if you're trying to adjust your phone and turn, turn it on, um, it's possibly you could get some strange movement in the, uh, the holder and then you're trying to figure out that again. So make sure your phone is in the camera mode that you want to use. Now, the last thing is you can use this in portrait mode, which is what I use like this. This is portrait mode. This is how I do most of my imaging. But you can also use it in landscape mode if you prefer. If you have flexure and you don't like that, uh, there's like no flexure in landscape mode. Um, I particularly like to use it in portrait mode because I can see the image very well and the app that I'm using to image, that's the best view as I get in portrait mode. And I'm going to show you about that app next. Um, let me go ahead and show you that. Okay, and the last part of today's video that I want to talk about is a particular app that I use and it's called Deep Sky Camera. Now, this is an app that I use for imaging uh, all the galaxies that I do. And this app is really awesome. It has all the settings that I need, and it has a preview screen, and it's just amazing. Now, I used to use my pro camera mode quite a bit. And pro camera mode doesn't have a preview screen like this app does, which is really, really nice. So I want to talk a little bit about that today and recommend that you use it if you have Android. 
um, the app isn't available for iPhone users. Sorry, guys, it's not on Apple Store yet. As far as I know, you can check. But if you have Android, go download this now. Now, one thing to note first is you have to have the ability to shoot in raw camera mode. So you want to check that. Go into your camera. Now, if you have, uh, for example, a pro camera mode, uh, like I do, I have a pro camera and a pro video mode, that's, you're probably going to have the raw option. So to check that, you want to go into your camera and into your settings. And down here, format and advanced options. Click on that. Make sure that you have save in raw checked. This is important before we use the app. Go ahead and check that now. If you don't have it, that means you're going to be shooting in JPEG. And that's going to be an issue when later when we want to go into processing these images on the PC, uh, we're not going to be able to do it. You'll still be able to take images of these galaxies, but you won't be able to stretch those images in uh, post-processing programs like Photoshop or PixInsight. Uh, so that's going to be an issue, but you can still take the pictures. So check that now and make sure you have that. Now, next. So I've already got it downloaded, of course, and we're going to go into Deep Sky Camera here. I want to show you a little bit about it. So this is what Deep Sky Camera looks like when you open. Now, I've got mine set up, so yours probably won't look like this immediately. Um, now, the first thing you want to do is go up to the top here to these three bars. Click on that, and you want to click on this Info button. This info button is going to show everything about your phone and your camera sensor. It's going to show you your phone model, your CPU, uh, JPEG is supported, RAW modus is supported. That's important. If you see that there, that means you're good to go. Your resolution, your ISO range, your minimum exposure time, and your max exposure time. I'm shooting at max 30 seconds. Um, your camera sensor your model and your camera sensor. Now some phones uh, like the Galaxy S, uh, let's see, the A70 and the A71, they're shooting, uh, if you have this app downloaded, they, those phones are shooting at max 100 and 106 second uh, exposure times, which is really, really nice, really awesome to have that ability. I'm looking at picking up one of those phones because I am only shooting at 30 seconds. So we click out of here. Now this is the generic screen that you're probably going to get in the beginning. And I want to explain a little bit about it. First you see this preview screen. And then at the bottom here you have some settings. So these are totally separate. This preview screen will actually show you what you're looking at when it's hooked up to your telescope. Now you can set this. I've got mine set to exposure time one second at ISO 3200. Now what that does is that collects one second of light and shows it here on the preview screen. And that's very important when you're trying to line up these galaxies, especially some of the darker ones uh, that are very uh, hard to see. Uh, galaxies like M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, with this one second exposure time, ISO 3200, it's going to show up really bright in here because that's a really bright galaxy. Uh, Andromeda is going to be the same. Uh, Bodes is going to be the same. The center of Bodes is going to show up. And actually, when I just recently imaged the Cigar Galaxy, I could see it in here very bright. It was really awesome. And that's going to help me make sure that I'm lined up in here when I'm trying to take these images. Um, so you have a zoom as well. You can pinch, pinch in, pinch out for your zoom. And then you got this little box right here. If you click it, it's going to give you a grid. You can click it again. It's going to give you a smaller grid. Uh, some people might find that helpful. Um, I don't really use it. I keep mine off. Um, so this preview screen is one of the features that I really love about this app. This you don't have in pro camera mode on your phone. Um, so this is really important. And this is separate from these images down here. I'm sorry, these settings down here. So... You can set it in your settings. If you go into settings, <clears throat> it's going to show you a lot of different settings in here. Um, I have mine set focus to infinity. Uh, preview exposure time is manual. That means I can change it. I have it set to max. Max 3200 uh, is going to collect a lot more light um, at one second. That's going to collect all the max light that I can get. Uh, your preview aperture, preview focal length, those are pretty much automatic. Some things you can change. 
Um, I keep mine at 1.5, which is better for night on these cameras. Um, I have a delay set up. What that delay is, when I hit the shutter button, it's going to wait five seconds before it starts to take a picture or pictures. And that's really important because a lot of times when you touch your phone, you get a vibration which goes into your telescope and you want that to settle down. You can change that to any amount you want. I like five. Sometimes I do ten. It depends on, on how much the wind, how windy it is or how much I plan on touching the phone. Um, digital zoom, viewfinder only. You can change that to your images as well where you can really zoom in on them. Um, you got a night mode, which is really nice. So if you like having that, uh, a lot of times I don't use it. I can actually see better. I like the regular white. Uh, now this noise reduction here, this is for JPEG only. Um, I keep it on high quality if I'm going to shoot in JPEG, but I usually don't. I'm always in RAW. Um, then down here at the bottom, play shutter sound. If you hit the button, it'll make a sound. Play end sound. It'll tell you that you've taken your pictures, uh, and it'll t tell you that. Create image thumbnail, show image thumbnail. Um, you'll be able to check those out at the bottom as well. Uh, logging, write errors in file. I've got mine set up, so that way if I have an issue, I can go back and send it to the uh, app owner, and he can check it and see what the problem was. So you don't have to have those set, but if you're like me, and you want to find out if there's an issue or something, uh, you can report that to the owner. You can click those on. Uh, path to images, you can put it in your gallery or any location you want. I have mine just set to my gallery. Now, one thing to note is sometimes when you check your gallery, they don't always show up in your gallery immediately. A lot of times when I go into my gallery to look at these pictures, they will pop up while I'm in my gallery. So you have to make sure take a note for that just in case it happens you're wondering where the heck are my pictures well they are in there they're in your phone somewhere um so just make a note of that now when you go back here and you go to the bottom these are going to be the settings for actually taking the pictures these are different than the preview screen so make sure you remember that two different settings here one for your preview screen only now if you're shooting galaxies i have it maxed out so I can really see that galaxy in here. Now, a lot of these smaller galaxies, you're not going to be able to see them at all. Don't worry. You can take some test pictures to check. But these settings down here are for the actual images you're going to be taking. Now, you see here, we've got format. And you can choose RAW, RAW and JPEG, or JPEG. We want to be shooting in RAW, so we're going to keep RAW on. That's going to be very important. And the next part is, is lights. And why does it say lights there? Well, we can shoot lights, we can shoot darks, we can shoot bias, we can shoot darks and bias and flats. These are just designations for the images that you're going to be taking. Um, I, when we're actually taking pictures of these galaxies, we want to make sure that we're in lights. That's going to be very important. Make sure you're in lights. And then if you do take darks, you can click at the darks and you can take your dark pictures. If you do take flats, the same thing. So you can change that. It just helps you uh, keep everything separately so you know what's what. <clears throat> the next part here is exposure time. And you can click on that and it'll show you your max exposure and your minimum exposure. Um, I'm shooting in my max, which is 30 seconds, so I always keep it there. ISO. You can change your ISO time to whatever ISO you're using. I'm always shooting in 800 usually. I don't really go any more or less than that. Depends on how much light pollution, uh, if I'm shooting under a full moon, whatnot. Over here, you've got uh, interval time. This is inter interval time between each picture that's taken. So after the first picture is taken, you can set an interval time between the next picture before it's taken. Uh, zero is burst mode. Uh, you can change that to whatever you like. Um, usually everybody just shoots in burst mode. So you set that to zero. And then over here, you can come over to how many frames do you want to shoot? You can choose the amount of frames you want to shoot. If you want to do a test picture, just pick one and do a test picture. So you can put in as many as you want. It'll take care of that for you. Uh, white balance, I'm always on auto. My aperture and focal, I really don't mess with that. I keep it as it is. Um, so, And then at the bottom here, you've got your shutter button. 
press that when you're ready to go and it's all automatic it shoots until it takes the amount of pictures that you put in there and right here I'll show you an image thumbnail um, and you can click on that and it'll actually take you over to your gallery as well where all your images are stored which is really nice and you can click on these and it'll show you that image you can zoom in on it there's the crab nebula one of the images that I've taken with it um, this was taken a while ago and then you click back and it'll take you right back there uh, so this app is really awesome. I love it. I highly recommend it. Um, if you're not sure about it, you can go into settings. There's a manual here. Click on the manual. There's a complete manual handbook in PDF format. It's really simple, easy to understand. Highly recommend reading it, getting it set up however you want. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. I'll be more than glad to help you um, with anything about this app. This app is awesome. It's just how I take all my Galaxy images, and I highly recommend it. All right, everybody, that's the end of today's video. I hope you found everything I talked about really informative, and I hoped it helped you learn a little bit about how to use the phone holder and the Deep Sky camera app. These are all important pieces that I use to image the galaxies that I do. So I wanted to explain in detail and help you how to use each one and a little bit about each one. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please comment below. You can also find me on Instagram, AstroPix Japan, AstroPix Japan. And that's what this channel is all about, is about helping you. That's why I'm doing these videos. I want to share my passion for doing this. And we are doing it with our smartphones, which is truly amazing. Uh, you know, the phones have come such a long way these days. And to, the ability to do this is really awesome. I love doing it. It's a little bit difficult. But once you get it going, it truly is amazing to be able to do this from start to finish and get these images so that's what this channel is all about, is helping you do the same thing that I do. And I'm going to be making a lot of videos, uh, some more gear videos, and hopefully we're going to get out under the stars and, and actually get some images. And my goal is to do a few live videos as well with some Q&A. And so look forward to those. I appreciate any likes. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please share this channel with anybody you know that wants to do this type of stuff. Uh, this is really an awesome hobby. I love doing it. And like I said earlier, whatever telescope you have, you can use. You don't need to have specific gear. Uh, there are a few important pieces like I talked about, but that's okay. You can still get out. You can still image planets, the moon, um, or even galaxies like I do. And that's why they call me Deep Sky Dan. Uh, so thanks again for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in next videos. And all right, guys, take care.